Hello everybody, it's Miss Willow from Farrandale Lepidopterist, and today I have an incredible opportunity for a teaching lesson to show you guys. So right here in front of me, I have six, not five, but six hornworms ready to pupate and turn into a cocoon to get ready to turn into a moth. And I wanted to show you guys who also raise these what to look for when they are ready. Now I have a large, large cage <laughs> ready for all of my caterpillars who are in different stages of development. Now I shouldn't handle these as much, if not at all. That's why they are in a different containment right now. But I have to show you guys what this looks like so that you are aware. If you are also in this situation, five of them are already dug down, but what happens is the caterpillar's aorta will start to show. They, were, they will first eat as much as they can to grow to full size as caterpillar, and then they will form this black pulsating line. And if I can get the phone to focus in on it. You can see right down the middle of his back, right down the middle of his back, there we go, is this dark line that is pulsating thin and thick. If you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. That is extremely dark and thick right now, probably the thickness of a toothpick. And they will start to get that vein, that aorta um, pulsating when they are ready to turn into a, Chris, a cocoon. Um, now, look for that, but when they get that, it will be a little thin line, which is a good sign. Eventually, the caterpillar itself, itself will start to shrink in size, turn a little bit greenish-yellow on the top, and will start to just circle and circle whatever enclosure you have, looking for the right place to bury him or herself. So their aorta, that pulsing vein, is going to get these large segments in between. You see how it almost looks like it gets thick and then thin and then thick and then thin on every segment? That is probably the best indicator that you should be separating them from the rest of the group of hornworms to cause as little disturbance to his... Um, situation as possible. So they need a place to bury themselves and completely submerge in substrate and keep in slightly, slightly misted, not dry, not wet, just perfectly in the middle. And they will go through phases of like this one came right up from the surface again. He came up again, his vein is much thicker, and he's just circling. They get a little bit grubbish, and it's harder for them to walk around. They just get really, really plumpy. <laughs> and they'll do this a couple times. They'll come up to the surface. They'll walk around. They'll figure out what they're going to do. They're, I put a piece of lettuce in there or a little bit of food for them, just in case they aren't quite done with their cycle. But what is best is that they have thick enough substrate. I'm using coconut core. Um, because it hasn't been touched from the outside world with bugs and you're not going to pick up little worms and spiders in it. So it's, I think, one of the cleanest options to get as a substrate for them and it absorbs a lot of moisture. So if you keep it spritched like with a little mister here and there, they should be fine. I have a lid like this. It's a doily for good ventilation. You could see that there's air holes. Ventilation is extremely important for caterpillars because they are very easy to catch viruses, diseases, and when they catch any sort of virus or disease, they will most likely die. So if you can keep the air quality and inner air flow nice and healthy for them. Imagine if three people had a cold and you trapped them all in a bathroom. That's a horrible thought. But they're all going to get sick. If you have them all in an open field with breeze and airflow, you know, it sounds a lot nicer. So think of these caterpillars like 
Like, everyone has the potential to have a cold, you know? Um, see, that one's already digging. You get to see firsthand that behavior. They want to go underground, same as a lot of other moths, to form their cocoon in the dark. So these guys are going back and forth. They're figuring out their situation, because just today I put them in this new new container. So because the other guys were walking on them, making racket, making a lot of noise, would disturb their process. So I keep these guys separate. And that's why I'm showing you this video of what to look for when they are ready to be separated and put into this undisturbed environment. So now that they are doing their thing, I have showed you guys what I had to. And we can now leave them alone. <laughs> they're going to do what they're going to do. They have a little food just in case. We don't ever want any of these starving, getting sick, not having what they need. And they will eventually shed their final caterpillar skin underground. And you will find a big, big pupa. It'll have, it'll have the proboscis nose part attached to it. It'll look like a scary gas mask. <laughs> um, it's a really funny looking cocoon. <laughs> But um, it, it's rewarding. You're not going to want to touch that cocoon, okay? You're not going to want to touch it. Don't play with it. Don't hold it. The greases from our hands are bad for it. We need to just let nature do its thing. That's very hard when it comes to a fun project like this. And you've waited a long time. You've waited weeks for your caterpillar to turn into this cocoon. You're going to end up wanting to touch it. But please don't. <laughs> it needs to do its thing. Um, especially when it's new and soft. So that is my little lesson under 10 minutes, what to look for when they are ready to pupate. They will, they will go through this. You see, they will go through little moments. They're, con they're they get a little confused. This is a new environment for them. They have to figure out on their own what's going to happen, what they want to do. They have to learn this on their own, and it might take a little while to get it out of their system, but eventually they are going to settle down underneath that substrate and turn into cocoons. Now, stay tuned. I will keep you guys posted on new lessons, what to look for. These caterpillars are quite big, very rewarding, and when they turn into that hummingbird hawk moth, you are going to be so proud. It's going to be incredible, and I will show you guys videos when that happens, on how to care for them, a good, a good setup technique, how to feed them, um, how to handle them, a lot more to come. But right now, I don't have any uh, adult moths right now. My batch is just growing up and these are getting close. I have a lot more on their way to this stage, so it's going to be a constant shifting, constant um, I'm gonna have to move them around. It's not recommended, but I'm gonna have to do certain things. But you guys will see these videos. Anyways, guys, um, this was Ferrandale Lepidopterist, Miss Willow. Have a wonderful day, and comment any questions you have on these little guys. I am here to help. Have a good day, and don't be stressed. Be happy. Breathe. Have a good one, everyone.